causes of Israel's current military onslaught on Gaza that has already claimed the lives of an estimated 30,000 Palestinian civilians and has resulted in wide-scale destruction and the catastrophic humanitarian situation. Mr. President, honorable members of the court, it's often said that the right to life is the font from which all other rights flow. The same could be said about the right to self-determination. In the absence of self-determination, it is impossible for a people to realize a plethora of other rights. These advisory proceedings present this honorable court with the opportunity to assist in bringing about the immediate and unconditional end to the ongoing unlawful violation of the Palestinian right to self-determination. Mr. President, distinguished members of the court, this brings an end to an end the oral submission by South Africa. I wish to thank the court for your attention. Thank you. I thank the delegation of South Africa for its presentation. I invite the next delegation, Algeria, to address the court and call Professor Ahmed Larabat to the podium. Sir, you have the floor. Mr. President, members of the court, I have the honor of presenting the oral presentation of my country, the Democratic and People's Algerian Republic, as part of the advisory proceedings pertaining to the request of the UN General Assembly of the 30th of December 2022. I shall do this with the benefit of the following few remarks. The two questions posed by the General Assembly successively pertain to, I quote, the legal consequences of the persistent violation by Israel of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination of its occupation, its colonization, and its prolonged annexation, end of quote, and, and I quote once again, the consequences that the, uh, arising from the policies and practices of Israel on the status of uh, occupation and the legal consequences that flow from them for all states and the United Nations organization. The key word of the UN resolution is that of occupation. It is abundantly cited both in its uh, preamble as well as in its uh, operative paragraph, inter alia. It is the only term to be found in the two questions posed by the General Assembly. Such an importance should come as no surprise because the prolonged occupation of Palestinian territories is the central uh, point of their situation that has considerably deteriorated in every respect these past few months. It is the reason why Algeria will begin by addressing briefly the non-existence of compelling reasons not to respond to the General Assembly's request. That's the first point. And then it will focus on reviewing the manifestation of prolonged occupations of Palestinian territories and uh, their consequence on its legal status. Second major point, this um, examination leads to the acknowledgement of a continuous, gradual and extreme violation of the rules and principles of international law underscored by the UN General Assembly resolution. And lastly, final point, the legal consequences for all states and the organization of the United Nations on the non-existence of uh, compelling reasons. In substance, uh, four arguments were rehearsed. Uh, there's, first of all, the 
uh, principle known as the uh, circumvention of the absence of consent to the court's jurisdiction, first point, the um, existence of uh, factual evidence, second point, the um, conflict that exists between this request and the existence of a negotiating framework, third point, and lastly, the absence of aim and purpose of the request. Algeria recalls that these have been constantly discarded by the court, notably in its opinions of 2004 and 2019, to mention but two of the most recent ones. There's uh, no uh, circumvention of the absence of consent to the court's jurisdiction constantly invoked in advisory proceedings, notably in that pertaining to the unlawfulness of the construction of the wall in 2004. This argument has uh, quite uh, constantly been discarded by the court. As the High Court uh, declared on a number of occasions, the possibility of the existence of a concomitant bilateral dispute to an advisory uh, proceeding is in the nature of things. In this regard, it would be hard to find uh, further reasons that might uh, legally justify the reiteration of this argument. Second point that we can term the factual uh, question. This argument is also a classic one regularly put forward to invite the court to refuse to accede to a request for an advisory opinion. The court has always uh, refused this. It notably uh, declared in paragraph 58 of its 2004 opinion that, and I quote, the circumstance that others may evaluate and interpret these facts in a subjective or political manner can be no argument for a court of law to abdicate its judicial task." End of quote. On the third argument, that pertaining to the existence of a negotiating framework. Another major classic in this regard, the existence of a negotiating framework put in place by the Oslo Accords was once again put forward in order to invite the court not to accede to the request of the General Assembly. The court took clearly a position in paragraph 53 of its 2004 opinion by declaring that participants to the proceedings expressed in this regard divergent views and the court, and I quote, cannot regard this factor as a compelling reason to decline to exercise its jurisdiction and quote, on the absence of aim and purpose of the request of the General Assembly. This argument, that of the absence of aim and purpose, is uh, not new either. Here again, the court should not accede to it. We can notably refer to paragraph 60 of its advisory opinion of 2004, where uh, the court rejected it by stating, and I quote, as it emerges from the court's uh, jurisprudence, advisory opinions serve to supply the organs that request the elements of a legal character that are necessary as part of their activities. End of quote. It added in paragraph 62 that, and I quote, the court um, cannot decline to answer the question posed based on the ground that its opinion would lack any useful purpose. The court cannot substitute 
its assessment of the usefulness of the opinion requested for that of the organ that seeks such opinion, namely the General Assembly, end of quote. At the same time, that brings to an end the first part of the presentation. Part two, the manifestations and consequences of prolonged occupation of Palestinian territories. And uh, firstly, observations on the occupation of Palestinian territories. It's an ambiguous notion, if ever there was one, because located in theory at an intermediate stage between war and peace, the notion of occupation found its basis in Article 42 of the Hague Rule of 1907, whose customary nation is not uh, contested, as the court recalls in paragraph 89 of its uh, opinion on the construction of the wall. Without dwelling on the um, legal uh, regime of occupation, it is important uh, to highlight with a broad brush its most uh, fundamental aspects. In substance, occupation was originally devised in a context that needs to be underscored in which there did not yet exist the principle prohibiting the use of force. It was devised as a temporary regime in which the occupying uh, power, as we know, does not exercise its sovereignty. One may, inter alia, underscore that it was uh, devised to manage temporary situations between the end of hostilities and the conclusion of peace treaties. It would almost suggest a peaceful relationship between occupier and occupied regarding which the idea of prolonged occupation was uh, totally inconceived by um, the drafters of the time. It's the reason why the right of occupation addresses neither the question of its prolongation nor with stronger reason, that of its permanency. The multiplication of armed conflicts has brought about new forms of occupation. The realities are far more complex than the state's contemporary doctrine, as the ICRC regularly question um, certain uh, deficiencies of the law of the years 1907 and 1949. The Palestinian situation is a striking illustration of the violent contrast that exists between uh, theoretical um, appearances that have just been sketched out with a very broad brush and a reality. Algeria considers that the situation created in 1948 and continued um, shows up uh, starkly the uh, misuse and abuse of the concept of occupation by Israel in occupied Palestinian territories. Israel's goal is to reach a point of no return in order to discard all possibility of the creation of the Palestinian state. This um, objective has uh, several forms decided on the basis of situations specific to each part of occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, that's to say East Jerusalem, uh, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And so, occupation is becoming, if it hasn't already uh, become so, an avatar of former uh, legal uh, techniques that expressed, um, each in their own way, uh, the right of power. Second point after those brief observations, the colonization of Jeru East Jerusalem and the West Bank and the situation in the Gaza Strip. First corollary 
of prolonged occupation. In the three parts of Palestinian territory, we find the same policy and the same uh, practice that we can summarize with the formula that of fact against law. In East Jerusalem, with the war of uh, 1948, the UN uh, plan for um, partition, Resolution 181, by the General Assembly, was uh, first to stopped in its track, and the fait accompli um, illustrated by the occupation of the western part of Jerusalem by Israel in violation of Resolution 181 at the same time by the adoption of legislative and administrative measures, including expropriation after the 1967 uh, war. Israel began to apply its uh, domestic law with the application, but not exclusively, the adoption of two laws adopted on the same day, 27th of June 1967. This policy will be strengthened even further with the law dated uh, 30th of July 1980, making uh, Jerusalem the capital, I uh, quote, full and reunified of Israel, but in fact it uh, should be characterized as de jure annexation. I'll return to that. The uh, law of 27 of no November 20 amended it with the view to consolidating it even further, and I quote, to prohibit the uh, transfer of all form of government power. End of quote. This uh, law of 2000 was once again amended in 2018 to strengthen its scope even further. So, fait accompli on the one hand, followed by the establishment of Israeli legal rules in the West Bank. Here again, two successive uh, phases. Uh, planned military occupation is followed by the beginning of colonization with the building of hundreds of settlement and the displacement and confinement of the Palestinian people as well as the uh, destruction of their uh, buildings. The most uh, striking feature in the West Bank resides in the spectacular increase in the establishment of settlements between uh, 2012 and 22. The numbers uh, went from 520,000 settlers to uh, 700,000. That's quite uh, dizzying a figure. And the consequences were of several orders uh, to um, move uh, the uh, human beings and also to displace as well as confine the Palestinian people and last but not least the construction of uh, infrastructure and the exploitation of natural resources. All historians of colonization stress the compelling importance of the dispossession of land in establishing and accelerating colonization. That of Algeria is a particularly striking example. As to Gaza, third point, the Israeli withdrawal of the Gaza Strip in 2005 was immediately followed by the blockade and four large-scale uh, military operations of which the uh, latest is ongoing. How can we uh, focus on the fate of Gaza without evoking the current situation? The facts, first of all, in truth, they speak for themselves <coughs> and the uh, images speak volumes. Res ipsa loquitur. Next figures that are overtaken the day after their announcement over 
almost 30,000 dead and twice as many wounded, the destruction of almost half of all essential infrastructure <coughs> goes hand in hand with famine, lack of water, really uh, below the minimum level of necessities. The situation of uh, Rafa is the latest preoccupation of the international community and international organizations. Its gravity is due to the latest plan by Israel to launch a last uh, scale military um, operation of a civilian population of 1.4 million people stunned and buffeted a Gaza Strip that had devastated for a long time. And paraphrasing uh, Cato the Elder, obsessed by Carthage, whose leitmotif was uh, the term Cartago de Landa, as we can say today that Gaza destructum est. On annexation, annexation is the second corollary of um, prolonged occupation, the first being colonization. The legal consequences uh, stemming from the uh, dramatic developments of prolonged occupation raises the question of the uh, development of the latter. It's not a new question. It is evoked, sometimes suggested, sometimes frankly uh, considered um, after every war, notably by Israel. But over and above that, the um, situation of prolonged occupation since uh, 1967 imposes it inevitably in the debate in its resolution of the UN. The General Assembly expressly referred to the impact of Israeli policies and practices on the legal status of occupation regarding the court's jurisprudence. In Algeria would recall that in its con advisory opinion of 1950 on the international status of Southwest Africa, and as I quote, where it was expressing itself generally on the mandates, and I quote the court, the court had underscored that two principle was deemed as of uh, paramount importance, and I quote, that of non annexation, paragraph uh, 131 of that opinion. Algeria recalls next the paragraph uh, 121 of the opinion on the 2004 war. The um, court felt that the construction of the wall and the regime associated thereto creates on the ground a fait accompli. Fait accompli, in inverted commas, creates on the ground a fait accompli that might well uh, become permanent, in which case, and notwithstanding the official description that Israel gives of the wall, the uh, construction of this wall would be tantamount to um, de facto annexation in a uh, End of quote. In this uh, excerpt, the court considers, first of all, that the construction of the war and its legal regime are fait accomplis. It then refers to the possibility of their permanency. <coughs> and it concludes by uh, using the uh, conditional that this, the permanence, would transform the occupation regime into de facto annexation. In other words, it's the permanence that conditions the passage from occupation to de facto annexation. So inevitably, this refers to the Midi, heure locale du Caire. Bonjour et bienvenue sur Noël TV 